Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, hope everyone's having a good day. Um, today we have a special segment of um, Learn Analytics. Um, most of the Learn Analytics uh, segments that I've been doing thus far have been um, more on the podcast side. Um, but today we have a um, guest with us, uh, Jackson. Um, he, he recently um, was affected from the COVID situation. Uh, but um, today he could uh, share with us um, some of his learnings and findings um, through that uh, and ultimately uh, what helped him uh, land a full-time role as a data scientist. Um, so how are you doing, Jackson? I'm good, Hubert. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yep, really excited to uh, get the viewers and pick your brain on this because I'm sure uh, a lot of the people would love to learn more how to um, you know, um, get a job in this current situation and um, what's the best way of doing it. So, sure. cool. Yeah. Um, so I think what we wanted to start with was actually um, to look up uh, for one, you know, one particular job description and then talk through it and sort of um, guide uh, the audience on it. Right. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So just to give you a little bit of context, Hubert, uh, I've been working at a software company in the healthcare realm. So they like focus on building products for employees and like helping them with their well-being, take care of themselves. And I did support and production analytics for them. And mm -hmm. so I did a, I did that for five years, but unfortunately to your point, I was laid off and that was really rough. And so um, for the past three months, I've just been going through this hundreds of these like iterations of applications and just trying to dissect what these job descriptions are looking for. And I think this will be very valuable to our audience for those who are starting to get started uh, in their analytics career or, you know, data careers. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. When, yeah, let's dive into one then. Sure. Cool. Give me a second. I would try to, uh... cool. Yep. So yeah, let's uh, go for, maybe a role in California, uh, since we're both in California. Uh, how about more of, yeah, definitely want something more of the entry level role, right? Something mm -hmm. that people could um, sort of get into the career and um, around that. And something more, I think one of the things we talked about, more of a relevant role, like, you know, some, some role that's like more recently posted. Yeah, uh, something to note for the audience is if you look for the past year or the past month, some of these postings might be dated or they might be like already filled. So it's important to look at past week or more recent positions. So what's a position that captures your eye, Hubert? Mm, I actually heard of this company, uh, Ship. They're actually a part of... Um, one of the startups, I believe they started in like around 2015 or 2016. And then they were acquired by uh, Target and they work in sort of a grocery delivery service. Um, yeah, maybe let's dive into this one. Okay. Yeah, so like in terms of routine, you, you, you nailed it on the head, Hubert. Like I will look for, you know, someone who's new to the industry. I'll look for something data related, something in the past week, and then I typically start on Mondays or Tuesdays when I look through new jobs and mm. you might be wondering why. And the reason is on the weekends, recruiters, HR, they're not typically working. Some, some do, but you're not going to see a lot of new postings. And so I, I personally think the best day to look for jobs is Monday to Tuesdays. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is a great company. I, I didn't know that they were acquired by Target, but yeah, let's dive in. Yeah. So I think, Pretty, pretty standard, right? As you look at, um, you know, some of these job descriptions, they usually start out with talk about the company, right? Just some brief information, what it is. Uh, I, personally, I think that's like, honestly, super important information, right? When you're applying for a company, like I know it's a data analyst role and you might be applying for, you know, I don't know, 100 or 50 at a time, right? But, but the thing is like, when you go down in the, especially later on in the interviews, right there, they, the recruiters are super interested in if you know what the company do, right. And really uh, how does the analyst play into that? Right. So 
I think it's this gives you a just right it gives you also on the candidate side right um yeah are you interested in the company right like if you just click apply and you're not really interested in it it's you, you know it's harder down the road like i'll rather have you know a candidate who is um passionate about the company to begin with so um that's my thought so really anything to add there jackson on your side or? no i'm with you like when you get on the phone with the hr screener or recruiter the more research that you've done on shift um it really shows like you can talk intelligently about what you know about the company what they've done in the past three to five years what's the direction of their data team um and that just really shows the hr recruiter that you've done your due diligence you're willing to go above and beyond compared to let's scroll up a little bit hubert uh, so it seems like 420 applicants have applied to this job role and so I think mm -hmm. or job posting mm -hmm. and so if you're doing that due diligence you're gonna set yourself apart from those other 419 applicants mm -hmm. yeah and, and another thing I did want to probably point out to uh, some of the viewers right like leverage who's in your network right like see if you know you have any connections there right? Like definitely if you have someone, you know, try to reach out or just ask them, you know, um, maybe it's someone um, you don't know that well, that's a connection, but it's a, it's a good point, right? Like try to reach out if they never get back to you, that's that. But if, if they do get back to you, you know, like who knows, right? It might be easier of a process. Yeah. Like if you think about the, on the receiving end, a recruiter, has to go through 420 applications whereas if you reach out to your connection that's a straight line communication and then mm -hmm. they can reach out to the recruiter for you so yeah. that's a good yeah. point cool yeah so let's dive deeper here um something i notice here uh maybe you could feel free to chime in as we speak right um yeah like the role definitely seems very cross-functional right it's like right away you'll be working on a cross-disciplinary team right um very product focus right uh i really like some of the things they've mentioned like you'll get a lot of sort of you know this is an entry-level role and i think it's great when you see it in the post too like you'll get mentorship from you know teammates right you're, it's it's an entry level uh, but they highlight you know you're gonna learn right and you're gonna do things so uh, i don't know do you have anything to add and in, in this category no, that sounds good. Cool. For your responsibilities. Yeah, like maybe I could ask you, Jackson, like based on your experience and X, you know, um, what's what's your thoughts on this category here, your responsibilities? Yeah, so your responsibilities, um, how you can go about or think about this is what you'll typically be doing on the job. And so they're looking for someone who can provide ongoing analysis for shopper focused teams and new initiatives. Uh, what that really means is, hey, um, what is the behavior of our shoppers? And so, as you can imagine, as a data analyst for this position, mm -hmm. you're gonna be sharing with the customer success team or the, the, I guess, marketing team, like how they can go about future campaigns um, based off of your data analysis or what you can, what insights you can pull from the data based on the behavior of shoppers. So this section right here, guys, is really what will you be expected to do on the job? And mm -hmm. one thing to note is don't stop at applying jo to jobs just because you don't, you can't fulfill all five of these bullet points, right, Hubert? Like, mm -hmm. I would yep. say you can do three of these things very well or very strongly. Mm -hmm apply like the worst thing that ha can happen is that they don't get back to you but mm -hmm. the best thing that, that that can happen to you is that they'll call you back and say hey hubert like i would love to chat with you you seem to be really strong in understanding kpis and metrics mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so do you have time to hop on a call so that's my encouragement like if you don't fulfill 100 percent, that's okay if you hit two or even three bullet points apply anyway yeah no, I, I, th I think that's a great point, right? Uh, especially when we're looking at roles more on the entry level side, right? Like even though they have straight requirements or responsibilities, right? An entry level role, they're, they're really to develop some of these 
uh, qualities, right? You might have some, you know, some experience, you know, maybe from school or maybe your first role or X, Y, Z, right? But like, I think a lot of this is they're looking um, that you have done some of it, but at the same time, there's always to bring in someone uh, on entry level, they're looking for to develop you, you know? Um, so I think some, some things you, you right off the bat, like, looking for doing analysis for more of the shopper focused, right? Like, oh, really thinking about uh, customer insights, right? Around the shopper, right? And then similar hmm, operations planning, collecting, researching, analyzing shopper data. So like you could see this, this role is going to be very heavy on uh, insights around the shopper uh, from mm -hmm. my perspective. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then, now this section is more of like asking, now we talked about what you might be responsible in that role, right? Now this section's the, like more of like the basic requirements, I would say, right? Um, yeah, Any anything here, Jackson, um, you wanna add on requirements? Yeah, um, so same thing with the above section about requirements, or excuse me, the responsibilities. Same thing here, same logic. If you feel like you don't have 100% of the requirements, that's okay. Um, just being able to knock out one or two, three of these is good enough. Mm -hmm. um, I, really, I really believe in that because they don't want someone who is, or you might not even wanna apply to some, some position where you're 100%, like you have all the qualifications, right? Because you might easily, be bored of the position right away. So mm -hmm. the key is that they're looking for someone who's hungry, someone who really wants to learn. Like mm -hmm. it says right here for uh, entry level data analysts that they want someone who's strong in R and Python and SQL. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you the truth, guys. Some data scientists out there, they're not even that strong in Python, R or SQL. Like they mm -hmm. might be good, mm -hmm. but it's, these are honestly nice to haves and. Mm -hmm. Um, down here, you'll see nice to haves as well. Um, ETL process is something that data engineers are very um, well versed in and they are mm -hmm. experts in. And so these are honestly all things where if you feel like you can knock out 50, 60% of the requirements and nice to haves, apply away. Like, what do you think about that, Hubert? Yeah, no, I, I think honestly, uh, it just sort of goes back to my point, right? Like if this as a company, right, you're really interested in working and you think this position is, you know, you could at least have a good 50%, 60% shot at it based on your experience, like just apply <laughs> and then figure it out at a later step, right? Like I think back to what you were saying, like it's, it's you know, the word strong is actually very uh, vague. <laughs> like what, how is that defined, right? Like how, what is strong to you? <laughs> You know, like um, that's that's where, you know, some of this is like still like bachelor's degree. Right. I, I think that's, you know, uh, sort of the basic requirements. But even if someone may be working towards a bachelor's degree, right, maybe had experience being doing stuff in analytics, but maybe more using Excel. Right. Or something of that nature. Right. That shouldn't stop you from applying for this role, too. Um, yep. because, because you know, data, you know, uh, you know, the num how to use numbers. So like, I, I think it goes back, like if you think this role suits you and you have a lot of interest, you should go ahead with it. Right. Yeah. And, and just looking at this, um, it says experience with BI platforms and data viz tools like Tableau. Like if you've never had experience with Tableau, just look it up, you know, like open mm -hmm. a new tab, type in Tableau watch some YouTube videos like you're doing right now on understanding some of these technologies and like just be in, be able to speak about it intelligently enough to have a conversation and say like, this is what Tableau does. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not super familiar with it, but I'm willing to learn. This is what I've done. I've looked up YouTube videos. This is what, you, what I understand Tableau to be. Yeah, those are all good points, right? Like if you don't know what R Python, right? is, you know, look it up, take a shot at it, right? I'm sure someone in your circle would know. <laughs> someone in your circle probably uses it, right? So you could always uh, pick someone's brain, right? And another thing is like, 
uh, learn analytics, right? There's so many different people. We've had different guesses, right? Uh, Jackson, you know, myself, right? You could always reach out, right? Just go in the comment section or even reach out to us on LinkedIn, right? Uh, yeah. Or we're happy to help, so. Yeah, if you guys have any questions um, as you're digging through a job description and say like, oh, I don't have experience here, where can I learn about this? Like, we'd be happy to engage with you guys and provide you that help. Yeah, so, cool. And then I think this section, if people have sort of um, a LinkedIn premium account, it's actually pretty interesting too. Um, maybe we could briefly chat about this. So I actually like this if you have a LinkedIn premium account. Uh, I know it is like currently I'm paying like maybe $30 a month uh, for it. Um, honestly, for someone who is looking for a job, uh, I think it's actually pretty useful because it gives you more details and it actually gives you some analytics behind those positions you're applying for. Um, yeah. So. I believe that they have a free trial if you want to just test it out. But Hubert, yeah. what what are some ways where you've leveraged premium or like why do you think it's helpful? Yeah, I think I think it just gives you sort of a a baseline, right? I think two things that I actually like. We could dive into this too, uh, but the earlier part, right? You could sort of it, what it does is it try to look at your, you know, your past experience, right? So LinkedIn, you put in your past experience on there, right? You put in um, different skills, right, that you have. Maybe you you have used R or you have used Python or you've used Excel, right? And then it'll, it'll try to look at maybe your current role, right? And try to basically what it is it is, it's sort of like it's a benchmark or an indicator, right? How competitive are you with the other people who are applying for this role, right? So um, of course, like it, it makes sense. Like I've been working as more of the data analyst space for like the last five or six years, right? This role is more of an entry level job, right? So if I apply for this, I'm more in the top candidate profile around that, right? But yeah, yeah go ahead. Did you have any? Yeah, uh, another thing that came to mind was like on the right hand side, you'll see top yeah. skills. You have yep. eight out of the top 10 skills. And for, for some of you who are just starting off in your data careers, you might not have eight or 10, you might be at three, four, but mm -hmm. this is a way to understand what the industry is looking for. Yep. Um, it's a great way to understand what the job is looking for. And so yep. here you can understand, oh, these are the 10 things that I should really focus on um, in honing my skills. Yeah, no, I, I'm 100% on even our earlier points, right? Like, it, you shouldn't feel, I would say, discouraged if you don't have those things, right? How you should take it as in, oh, yeah, like, I, I might only have three of the 10, right? But maybe these are other skill sets I should learn, right? Or go deeper into, right? It really helps you identify some things, uh, you know, to, to continue to improve, so. Yeah, and then similar, like uh, you could see who, what, what level of candidates are applying for such a role, what's their sort of education background, uh, where, where are they located, type of thing. Um, yeah, and then I, I actually like this view too. Um, it's more actually when you think about the company you're working for, right? Uh, I think most people who want to join, you know, a certain company, you want to work in a company that has good growth, right? You're not in a stable or constant or even you know companies that might be trending downwards in their hiring right if they're trending downwards in their hiring i honestly uh would suggest you to apply for other roles because you know the company's not really faring too well overall right and you might be applying and you might even end a job there but you don't know right especially the current times right like i would say if you get into a company and their their growth trajectory is actually not so well like i don't know if you being there is a great uh, spot. So <laughs> that's just another opinion of mine. So, yep. and then you could also see how long people uh, tend to stay at that company for, right? So I think that's very important because if, you know, people who are looking to build their data career or just their career in general, right? You want to be in a good company and you want to be on a good team, right? You want to be somewhere that they value you. And I might look at, you know, like, oh, how long do people actually stay at that company? Right. And just et cetera. Like where else have they worked at? 
uh, in other space, right? This is pretty similar, like they've worked at Instacart or Starbucks or Uber or other companies and then what schools they went to, so cool. Um, yeah. Anything else to look at in terms of, I guess if, as you're applying, um, one of the other things you can do is dive deeper into the company, right? So let's say you are very interested in this, or you should try to show that you're remotely interested in the job. What you can do is, what I, I, what I did, Hubert, when I was mm -hmm. doing job hunting was, what is the company looking for? How are they growing um, in the next three to six months? So what I like to do is, you know, I read about them. I want to see what other jobs are hiring for. So like if you, uh, yeah, you could go to their website, understand what they do. So you can talk intelligently about what their product is and what their mission statement is, right? Um, if you go back to the LinkedIn page, Hubert, if you click on jobs, um, you'll see that they are hiring, uh, let's see, they're hiring a good amount of people. And so yeah. it can kind of show you that the company is growing yeah. uh, to be a lot of data roles, like mm -hmm. data yeah. analysts, data scientists, uh, maybe even two members for their shopper operations team. So yeah. that go to show you that during your HR screen, you'd be like, hey, I noticed that you guys are hiring a lot of data scientists, data analysts, and data engineers. Are you guys in the earlier stages of your data team? Like, what does that look like? And on the other end, as an HR screener, I'm probably thinking, wow, like you really took the time to do research. Mm -hmm. And you might be someone I want to bring to the hiring manager saying, this guy's very engaged, or this girl is very interested in your company. Have a mm -hmm. talk with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I think uh, it all goes back to, you know, you understanding uh, the company, right? And then also asking the, yeah, the good questions, right? When you are further in the process with the interview, you know, with the recruiter, with the team, you know, even, you know, to the, you know, the hiring manager and X, right? So I think it, it's all about like, oh, you know, how does the data analyst role uh, come into play for the company? And like, what, you know, what, what do they, see this role be into right so yeah. yep cool yeah any additional things maybe uh we want to add here before um i think one of the other things we, we definitely want feedback from uh our viewers right uh now we looked into a job description maybe down the line if uh viewers are interested definitely comment uh what we're thinking is actually uh doing a uh sort of a resume or resume template right for this specific job description so yeah yeah i think a lot of companies when they're recruiting they look for keywords that are key skills that you might have on your resume and so it's really important that you can go through a job description like we went through the data analysts one and we found some keywords that you might want to include there right like tableau SQL, Python, just to name a few. And so in the next episode, we want to do a resume builder. We want to help you guys craft like a catered uh, resume toward those job descriptions so that you have a higher chance of landing a phone screen and hopefully an interview and a job. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would say is the conversion ratio. So what I mean is like for every 10 applications you put out there, you can expect maybe one person to get back to you. And so mm -hmm. like, it, it can be very discouraging. Like that's something I really want to throw out there. Like it can be discouraging when you're doing job, job applications, right Hubert? Like, I don't know if you went through this, but being rejected stinks, but don't let that define like the journey for you guys. Like just let it be known as, okay, I got rejected here, but it's okay. Like just keep applying, keep applying. Um, that's, that's what I would like to say about that. Yeah, same like, for for this chat like one one of the last thoughts that i had was like i think this might have been actually when i first finished my undergrad right when i was looking for my first role someone actually told me that um like all it takes is one yes right all it takes is one person you know right. saying you're the you're the right person and we'll hire you 
you know, like that's all it takes. <laughs> it's you, you'll get, I don't know how many failures or how many, you know, like rejections, but that's just part of the process. Like, yeah, it's really, like, yeah. Yeah. That's a big key. Like being positive, like being positive and negative will really show when you're talking to the next recruiter that you're speaking to, right? They want to be like Hubert. They want someone who's positive. They want someone that they want to work with. If you're coming in there negative, grumpy, mm-hmm. the, the, they might not want to call you again, right? So that's a, that's a good point. But yeah. as Hubert said, um, the next episode, we're going to go through a resume builder. Um, comment, comment in the YouTube video to, to let us know if this was helpful or useful. Let us know if you want to see more videos like this. Cool. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jackson. Yeah. Viewers, subscribe and like. So thank you. Sweet.